Hi, I'm Jackie Carter. I'm the Positive Youth Development Coordinator for Queen Anne's County, and I coordinate the Character Counts program, which does include a community mentoring program. And I'm here with my guest today to really talk about why mentoring is important. Various research studies have shown that a qualified mentoring program that follows hopefully some evidence-based practices help our children and youth to succeed academically, socially, and culturally. Having a trusting relationship with a caring adult mentor helps to broaden a young person's goals for their lifetime achievements as well as seeing themselves in a more positive sense in relation to their community. It also helps them to perceive themselves as a successful person in their community and then they are going to become that successful citizen. Mentoring can take many forms. It can be an informal structure or a formal structure. Our programs that we're going to be talking about today have a more formal structure, which means they have specific guidelines. And uh, many mentoring programs can be a combination of both individual mentoring and group mentoring, which means there could be one-on-one -on -one, or it could be one adult working with several students or several adults working with even more students in a group situation. National Mentor, which is the organization that really sets the goals for mentoring throughout the United States, had a report that was issued in January 2014 at where they had asked questions of young adults concerning college aspirations, being in college, positive activities, and the length of mentoring relationships. And they were looking at both informal and formal mentoring. And the students responded that if they were in some type of a mentoring situation, they did more positively on the questions that were asked. But it was found that in a structured mentoring program, a student had a longer lasting relationship with their mentor. They found that one in three students usually do not have any type of mentoring in their life. And the more at-risk factors that a youth has, the more they were saying they really would have liked to have been in some type of a mentoring relationship. And more young adults are now looking at becoming mentors themselves, especially if they had been in an enriching mentoring relationship. So that's bringing me to talking with my guests today. So welcome, because they both have mentoring programs in this community. So. Uh, will you please introduce yourself and just tell us a little background about yourself and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty. All right. mm -hmm. My name is Mary Walker and um, I am co-founder of Hope Academy and Hope Academy is an academic mentoring group and the acronym HOPE stands for Helping Other People Excel. And we've been active in the uh, community for the past four years, especially at the Ken Island High School, working with young people, um, just encouraging them to do well academically, helping them to um, maneuver the college application process, and just being a, a voice. You know, uh, we also do some things. Uh, a lot of the kids like to sing and, and dance poetry, so we, we've given them opportunities to do that also. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about your program and Eric. Hi, my name is Eric Daniels and I am parent coordinator at Sellersville Middle School. And we are kind of in the infancy of a mentor program, uh, which we have titled Valor and Distinction. Uh, and we're looking for people to come and work during the school time, uh, mentoring in the classroom uh, with students, um, targeting veterans, uh, fathers, grandfathers, um, mothers, uh, aunts, mm -hmm. grand grandmothers. We just would like to have more positive uh, influence in the classroom, um, showing our students that we do care, that they do have value in their academics, not just in their sports. Uh, that it's very important um, for for us and for them, uh, and it, it it makes them a round more rounded person, um, and also to try to get our community involved. Um, to try to get businesses to realize that they also can be mentors 
uh, those students that they're they're servicing now as they come in their store will one day be their employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to also get our community involved. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Now, in both your programs, is there a specific group of students that you are focusing on, or is it more all-encompassing? And what is the age ranges? I got. I originally got involved in the community with um, the minority uh, group, and and that's one of my focuses uh, is to. Um, to work with that group, but we work with many kids. A lot of the kids show up at lunchtime with their buddies, mm -hmm. and uh, so we work with anybody. But um, it's basically getting. Uh, we've talked, Mr. Daniels and myself are part of a group of who have started talking about the disconnect in education uh, among, um, uh, particularly uh, some of the minority mm -hmm. kids, and. Um, that, that's my focus, is trying to, to rebuild that connection with education, the love of education, mm -hmm. the, the love of learning, and, and the uh, willingness to aspire, you know, to, to look beyond what you're currently doing mm -hmm. and, um, and, and look towards some higher goals. Okay. Eric? And for me, I am um, working directly with Title I students mm -hmm. at Sellersville Middle School, but it does go beyond that for me. Uh, I do mentor uh, in my community. Uh, in several communities, uh, I've worked in formal uh, mentor programs for mm -hmm. years. Uh, so I'm I'm always mentoring in one capacity or another. Uh, my wife says I don't know who he's going to come in the door with when the door opens. <laughs> <laughs> so far it goes sometimes. Uh, but we're we're also trying to make sure that the kids understand that their education is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we want our um, you know our community, our parents, you know. To, to help them to understand that is important, you know. Sometimes, you know, if you could just give one hour, uh, it can make a big difference to a person. And it's not always about giving, you know, six days of your time. Right. It's, it's just the little things that you do that a kid will remember. Uh, they remember those things, you know, just a comment or a mm -hmm. smile sometimes can go a long ways. You know? Just being there mm -hmm. sometimes can make a big difference. Exactly, and in fact, according to National Mentor, um, an optimal amount of hours to work with children in a mentoring situation is four hours a month. That's pretty small potatoes, isn't yes, it? Yes, um, Could you please explain to our TV audience what a Title I school is? Uh, it's a school who qualifies because of the students who are farm students who receive free or reduced meals. Uh, and because of that, um, if you have a certain percentage, your school can get funds mm -hmm. to help to make sure that your, your kids are being educated and that they're having the same opportunity to succeed as, as other students. Definitely, because yeah. we know an empty stomach Absolutely. does not help <laughs> yes. a full brain. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I know that you're specifically within the school system yes. at Southersville Middle School, and you're working at Ken Island High School right now. But besides, what is it you exactly do when you are in Ken Island High School, and do you ever go outside the school? All right. Well, um, basically, what we're at, we ask parents. We would like to be, if we had the volunteers, we would be in. Uh, both the high schools and the middle schools, mm -hmm. at, at least. But because it's only if, uh, myself and another volunteer, um, we're at Ken Island High School. And what we ask uh, when kids come into our program, well, we have a little contract that parents and the kids sign, and we just ask the parents to allow us to, um, to get grades and attendance in information for the students. And then we're able to, um, you know, track the kids. Now, we right now we're we're uh, addressing the kids during their lunch period, so they don't always like us coming up barging <laughs> into their social time. But we we make an effort to touch base. You know, we get reports of you know the grades, and I, you know I can go into the council's office and say. Well, you know, could I have grades for such and such? And if I've mm -hmm. gotten that signed um, contract from the parent, and then um, we review it and say, ah, oh, we need to touch base. And sometimes I just have to say, yeah, you know, <laughs> at the lunch table, you know, take them off, don't embarrass them, but take right. them off to the side, and we talk to them about their grades. Uh, we also, on occasion, uh, we haven't started yet this this year, but. Every couple of months, we do have a seminar where we have the kids come in 
during their lunch break. We feed them, and then we have a guest speaker that will come in to motivate them. Um, we had a gentleman from the Up Store on Ken Island come mm -hmm. and speak to the kids and how he started his first uh, company at the age of 19. He, uh, it was a franchise, and he mm -hmm. bought into his first franchise in 19. Now he's got three stores and all. And the kids were very interested in that. And we also, because we're in close proximity to the ESOL students in the school, would they get invited to that um, mm -hmm. lunch and so. And then um, next week, because I said we have kids who like to sing and dance, and they don't always get the opportunity to do that in a school situation, uh, we've set up where we're going to have a winter program mm -hmm. next week, and the kids are going to be able to go. Um, well, they wanted to do it at their school, and, and I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. They wanted to build a sense of community at their school. So we're going to be doing that at their school. And they're also, next Saturday, they're going to uh, sing for a senior. There's going to be a senior Christmas dinner, and they're going to go mm -hmm. sing there. So we just give them opportunities to express themselves. Everybody's not the academic, the great academic. And some of them like to exercise those other skills mm -hmm. that they have. And, it, and as long as we can encourage some skill that they have, I, mm -hmm. I, I believe that they'll do better in all areas. I think you're right there, and they might even find that that's those skills, other skills they have, can enrich their academic yes. success right. too. But people don't always make that correlation, mm -hmm. yeah. so it gets lost. Everybody wants to feel successful yes. some, in mm -hmm. some area, and and once you get that, it builds your confidence, yes. and then you're able to, to definitely. Take it into other areas. And you took a little college trip last year or during the summer. Was well, we it? we try to take. Uh, college visits every year and because we don't have we don't have a funding source mm -hmm. right now um, that those are limited because it does take cost three to four hundred dollars every time we take a trip but we uh, we took uh, about 15 kids we were able to borrow a church <laughs> van and we took kids down to UMES and um, the kids get to to these colleges and they start to see themselves in the population. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the, a bulb goes on and says, you know, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know. Kids who's you know, never been interested in going to college or never expressed you know, interest in going to college, you know, now are talking about going to UMES mm -hmm. because they've seen that experience. And so um, that's the other thing we try to do is to widen the the exposure, the exposure, what's out there, mm -hmm. what's out there in careers, what's mm -hmm. out there as far as college situations. Um, a lot of our kids go to Chesapeake College, and and I always say that's great, but you know I remember back to my college days and, and what a rich experience mm -hmm. that is, and how it changed my life. And so we take them up off to the four-year colleges where right. where that experience is mm -hmm. even greater. Okay. And Eric, with your program, you have, yours is kind of really overarching um, at what you're trying to do. You had talked about bringing in veterans. Mm -hmm. um, so could you tell us a little bit more of what you're envisioning for this program? Well, we're also looking at um, trying to enrich our students' minds. Mm -hmm. um, at the middle school level, we're trying to also do some college visits. <clears throat> uh, so we are planning a trip, uh, hopefully in late January, right. to Delaware State University mm -hmm. uh, to take some of our students so they also can see the experience and, mm -hmm. and get an opportunity to experience it um, so that they can start thinking now as opposed to when they come sophomores. Very good. Uh, that they can start <laughs> planning mm -hmm. now and thinking now and knowing now that, you know, I can see myself here because I see somebody that looks like me or mm -hmm. I see somebody that, that maybe did, you know, they gave a tour, they say maybe they didn't think they could go, but they're there. Mm -hmm. um, just to be able to open their horizons, you right. know, to get beyond, um, you know, the boundaries of Queen Anne's County and, mm -hmm. and see some other things that they can experience okay. uh, and be enriched by it. Um, uh, we, would, we would like to be able to have our veterans to be able to come in and share their experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, veterans are not just males, which typically when we say veteran, that's what we think of. Right. Uh, we were blessed during our Veterans Day celebration mm -hmm. uh, that we did have a couple females that came in mm -hmm. and one who said she's very willing and eager to participate in our program. So oh, we're great. looking forward mm -hmm. uh, to her being, a, being an example for some of the females in our school and also to open up some eyes of some of the boys so they can see <laughs> that you know there, there are females who are veterans. Right. Uh, 
and uh, you know, as well as other parts of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we, our kids look at people and they, they choose heroes, but there's so many heroes right here where we live. You're right. You know, and, and there's no bigger hero than our veterans. There you go. And so we want to help to highlight and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, put them out in the forefront because without them, we wouldn't have the country we have. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking at other people from the community as well coming in? Yeah, as I said earlier, we're, we're <laughs> absolutely looking at uh, community business. Mm -hmm. uh, we're asking, reaching out to them and asking them if they would be interested in giving an hour or mm -hmm. you know, give some kind of, even as far as letting the student come in and volunteer to learn about what it is to run a business. Okay. Uh, learn about what, you know, what you have to do to take care of the money. What do you have mm -hmm. to do to make sure you have the supplies you need? Because kids don't really see that thing. They just see, I right. want to go in the store and get a bag of chips <laughs> and, and you know, that's all I want to do, but they need to understand, you know, it takes a lot to keep the inventory and to mm -hmm. get it where it needs to be and to keep it at the right level and all those things. So they mm -hmm. learn those things. Yeah, your math is important, you know, because <laughs> it's, it's going to add up to dollars or that's it's going right. to add up to debt. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they, you know, get a chance to go into some of those businesses mm -hmm. and learn a little bit about them. You know, and, and maybe hopefully intrigue some of them to say, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I may want to start a business one day. Okay. When these community people come in, whether they be business people, mm -hmm. retired teachers, or um, veterans, um, are they coming to a, like a big assembly or are they just going into small they, groups? They would be coming and, and going into different classrooms. <clears throat> We're, our, plan, our plan is hopefully to have a male and female come each time mm -hmm. uh, so that we have that balance, uh, that, that they could give us some info, some mm -hmm. bio ahead of time that we could share maybe on the morning announcement. Oh, okay. uh, that our students could hear about who's going to be in the school, mm -hmm. uh, so that they, you know, have an interest. They may be able to ask the person sometime in the hallway, uh, and that if there was an opportunity that they would be able to share in the classroom mm -hmm. a little bit about their experience, and that the teacher could tie it into the lesson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, and hopefully at the end of the year that we could have an assembly where they all could come and be recognized for their service. Oh, very nice, very nice, and I think tying it into the academic setting Absolutely. too is very important. Absolutely. Um, and, and you're doing the same thing. So it's showing that to be successful, yes. you have to have some type of academic Absolutely. success as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and that your academic success is not only important to you, your teachers, but it's also important to the community. You yes. Know? yes. Yes. Very, very, very true. So ideally, how many volunteers do you need? And when you get them, is there some type of a background check that they have to go through? Is there some training? Those types of things. Okay. Um, the, the background isn't that extensive. Um, what, what the schools ask for, if you're in the school on a regular basis, then they ask for a background check. check. If you're going to come in once during the school day, they want you to submit a volunteer application. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just coming in to speak or if you're going to be in once a month or, or something like that, then that the application will do. If you're going to be in on a regular basis, like myself, I'm in twice a week, then they ask you to have a background check. And um, the schools will do the, the background check or at least you'll go through them in order to get the background check. And it's a cost of $50 for, for that. I think that's still the... It's about close to yes. that, yes. And so that's your, I mean, that's a one-time thing. I, once a year or once every couple of years, you'll have to, to fulfill that um, that obligation. But other than that, um, and, you know, they're, they're just checking to make sure that the kids are safe and we want our, we want our kids safe. Um, so I, I don't see that as, as being a big hindrance to it. The other thing is people think that, you know, like Eric was saying, that you've got to devote a lot of time. <laughs> if you're waiting to have all the time and all the resources and all the money that you want and, and all the experience, and, and then people worry, well, I don't, I don't have anything that I can give to a kid. Right. Um, if you've worked somewhere, you know, if you've, if you, even if you're a homemaker, you've got that kind of experience. We, we just people need people who care about these kids and can can just give them any information. And then what what happens with me a lot of times, I don't know everything that these kids need to know for the college process. And I get on the internet and, mm -hmm. and we find it and we divulge that. So 
you don't have to wait till you have all the time in the world or all the knowledge in the world. Right. Just you know, kind of hop, hop in the pool. I mean, just the same way you would help your kids. You know, yes. if you didn't know, you know, they're going through a process and you didn't know about it. You, you try to make as many contacts, and that's what we do with our kids. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the big deal is, is just if you have a uh, unction, if you have that desire right. to help kids, mm -hmm. then, then just get into the pool and we'll find some way to use you. There you go. Yes. Now at Ken Island High School, you would say there's two of you right now. Do you need more there? And I know you want to expand to the other high school and then eventually to the other middle school. So ideally, how many volunteers would you like at each site? Well, I'd like to see at least four people at each site. Okay. Um, and, and that that will help both the volunteers and the kids. Um, mm -hmm. to, tonight I've got a couple things going on personally and something I need to do at the school. So having a backup would be mm -hmm. nice. You mm -hmm. know, so four people would allow that backup situation okay. in, in the event that we, one of our people either got sick or had an, another mm -hmm. obligation. Um, four people at, at each school is not a lot. No. We've got 20 seniors in the minority community this year. We've got 20 seniors graduating. Mm -hmm. And that process can be very lengthy. And, you know, kids are kids. You're going to, hey, did you fill out that application? Did you mm -hmm. turn in that scholarship? Did you get your FAFSA full? So those are the kind of things right. that we need just people to, to stay on, you know, mm -hmm. the kids about. Just to give that caring support, mm -hmm. you know, help, help make those positive decisions. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, Kids are kids, yes, so are. We, we've got to realize that and that uh, sometimes we just have to motivate them just like parents would motivate them. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And Eric? For, for me, in the program that we have, it is also going through the school system as far as your background check. Right. Because everything will be done during the school time. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, we're looking for 20 people. Okay. Uh, to cover us, you know, two people a month. Mm -hmm. um, you could come and spend a day. You could come and have lunch. You could come and spend part of the day. Oh, nice. uh, it really would be what works with your schedule, mm -hmm. uh, and we can, you know, kind of adjust to what you have that's available for you. Uh, but we're looking for someone that can come in and just spend some time, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes just to be able to have a meal with someone, um, or or just to be able to, to share with someone mm -hmm. some tips about dressing or. Uh, just s Definitely. simple things, everyday mm -hmm. things that, in my experience, a lot of times kids, uh, they love structure even though we think they don't. Right. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of times kids will say, well, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that until I started talking to you. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of things that just they just, just don't know, right. uh, even though at this age level, the middle school, we typically think that they think they know everything, right. but, but yes. they, they don't. And they will, they will, when you have a chance to talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. you will get to really to learn them and know that they do want to learn, they do want to succeed, you know, and, and that, that someone can be able to have that opportunity to, to share with a person, um, to help them. To, mm -hmm. yeah. I see that in action with their school resource officers, um, especially with the school resource mm -hmm. officer who's at your school, right. um, and she really builds some yes. great relationships yes. with those students that mm -hmm. they'll come and ask her Absolutely. all types of questions. Absolutely. So she's a common occurrence yes. in their yes. life because yep. she shows I care for you yes. and it's not like she's going in and mm -hmm. lecturing them or you know yes. she, she's hit and miss all over mm -hmm. the place but they know she's there and they can depend on yeah. her. And, and that's very important with kids they, they want to know they can depend on you they yes. want to know that somebody's going to be there if not then yeah. they're not as likely to trust you or, or feel comfortable to open up to you. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, partners you've been talking about we see business partners or other people coming in as speakers um, but what other ways can partners help you? Like you were saying you have meals, so I think you get some of your partners, if you can get a business to donate the meal for that particular seminar. So you please explain how you would need partners and if you need some in-kind or monetary help, that sort of thing. Yeah, some of the local businesses have helped us. During our luncheons, um, Safeway mm -hmm. and Subway have provided meals for the kids, and that's one way that businesses could help is to help provide meals. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the opportunity for exposure. Um, you know, I've inquired and to make some of the trips, even locally, to Morgan or to UMES, mm -hmm. it's about four hundred dollars, you know, for a bus to, mm -hmm. to take the kids. So donations uh, or 
I don't, I don't know how um, people would do it, but um, tax, tax um, deductible uh, donations would be good. Um, the other thing is that um, businesses could just come and you know talk about their businesses. Mm -hmm. Business people could come come and talk about their profession. And that would open up the exposure, you know, what's out there as far as careers. Right. Um, I remember I was a 10th grader in high school, and someone taught me to use a programmable calculator. Mm -hmm. And from that point on in my life, I wanted to be a computer programmer, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it was just that exposure that, and I would have, you know, without that class, or right. I would have never known mm -hmm. or never even gotten into <laughs> that field. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so many opportunities our students may not know about, or even if they hear about it via technology, it, mm -hmm. it's more meaningful when it has, it's presented by a person. Yes. Right, and, and sometimes I even go into the doctor's office if I'm getting an exam or, mm -hmm. or a procedure done. You know, what kind of education did, did you have? You know, what kind of, how long did it take you to get in the position mm -hmm. you're in? What's your job call and mm -hmm. that kind of thing? If people, you know, has, have unusual careers, you know, or whatever if they could come and just talk to our kids about mm -hmm. sounds good how about you Eric well for me I, th I think we live in a microwave generation mm -hmm. uh, everything is quick and fast and yes. we expect it now so sometimes uh, be able to have some community people come in and, and just put some some realization on mm -hmm. things um, yeah I, I run a business or yeah I own a store um, but you know it didn't happen overnight um, mm -hmm. you know like this is the steps I had to go through in order to to do it, you know, I had to get a loan, I had to do get a grant, or so they would have some real knowledge of what it takes to mm -hmm. um, to be in business, um, to be able to. I mean, even we have partnerships now in the school with, mm -hmm. with business uh, right. and, and community. Uh, we have great partnership uh, with the fire department in Sellersville. Mm -hmm. uh, they they allow us to use their facility when we have our, our orientation meeting for Title One, mm -hmm. uh, and they're very great partners for us. Um, you know, and you know, just to be able to share what it's like to be a fireman. You know, yeah. uh, or some kids, yeah, they see the fire truck, and it, you know, and maybe it's not good when when the fire whistle's going. Mm -hmm. uh, but be able to go in and, and learn about the part of, parts of the fire truck, or mm -hmm. or what you have to do to be on an ambulance crew. You know, just to right. be able to share those things, uh, that kids can get that you know firsthand experience from someone who actually does it. Right. Uh, you know, and then somebody may, may decide they want to be a fire person or, mm -hmm. or a nurse you know, because of what, what they've learned from someone in the community. Definitely. You know, as well as, you know, you mentioned a resource officer, you know, someone mm -hmm. may determine, you know, well, I want to be on Queen Anne's County Sheriff's <laughs> you know, go. Force. Right. You know, just because they've learned that it's, you know, it's, it's a community service, you know, mm -hmm. they're here to serve. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, um, I like both of your models. Um, I love the idea that mm -hmm. you're, you're bringing in more opportunities at the middle school level to say, where am I headed? Mm -hmm. um, because that helps them to decide what their academic course yes. is going to be. Um, am I going to go right into a job? Mm -hmm. Will I have to do some type of job training? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to go in for further mm -hmm. education? And then you're helping those students who maybe not thought they wanted further education, but giving them the idea that, yes, you could see yourself there, and that's so important because they're not seeing themselves yes. there. So, of course, it's, it's, you need other people to help you, too, yes. because yes. you cannot work in a vacuum. Um, how would anybody who wanted to become involved in your programs contact you? And then this information will be up on the screen, but you can give it out now. Okay. Again, my name is Mary Walker, and I'm a part of Hope Academy. And um, I can be reached at email address mwalker604 at yahoo.com. Okay, Eric? And I can be reached, Eric Daniels, uh, at Sellersville Middle School, which is 410-438-3151. Um, or you can email me at eric.daniels at com. Okay, and that's Q-A-C-P-S. Yes. <laughs> um, and we don't spell that one out. Right. Um, why do you think, I, I'm getting it from mm -hmm. you, but why do you think mentoring is important and does it matter in any of the forms that we've presented here today? Mentoring changes lives. It, it, it really changes lives. The, you, the least thing that you do 
in helping someone else could change their lives. Um, I was telling Mr. Daniels that um, I was a high, high school senior and I moved down to this area, so I was mm -hmm. only here one year. And I graduated, I applied to college and didn't get, I got in the college I wanted to get in, but I didn't have the finances to, to, mm -hmm. to go. So I said, well, I'll just go to work. And then uh, over the summer, the guidance counselor from Queen Anne's County, um, Mrs. Goldsboro, got a hold of my parents or some how, somehow and said, well, where's Mary? What school is she going to? And she didn't know me from Adam because I'd only been down there for a year. Mm -hmm. And um, she found out that I had decided not to go to school and she hooked an uh, interview up with me for University of Maryland. And that's where I ended up going. And, you know, I met my husband there <laughs> and, you know, so at any rate, she changed my life and I was able to write a, a letter to her later on, you know, when you're a kid, you just on and forward. <laughs> but later on in life, I wrote her a letter and I thanked her for, you know, just intervening like that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, didn't take a lot of her time. Mm -hmm. It was one thing she, and she didn't do it because she, you know, we were buddies. She just did it because yes. she cared. She just cared, right, yeah. So it, it changes lives. It does. Mm -hmm. and, and I had that same experience, mm -hmm. um, but I also had an experience prior to that in my community. You know, I had a, a person in the community who kind of took me under his wing uh, and uh, just made me a part of his life and a part of his family. Um, but also when I got into that period of going to 10th grade, I had that same guidance counselor uh, who pulled me off to the side along with the vice principal at the time, which was Mr. John Andrews. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they said, you're your mother's last child. You know, you're the last opportunity and you're going to college, you know, and mm. they said, we're going to, how about changing your, your curriculum? And we did. We changed it uh, from business to academic mm -hmm. uh, and off I went. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she did the same. Uh, you know, they, they kind of undergirded me and made sure that all mm -hmm. the things that I needed to know uh, to prepare that I was able to do those and the opportunity was there. Uh, and it also drastically changed my life, my pattern in my life. You know, I was thinking about maybe going in the military, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I know Mom was saying, when you graduate, you got to get out of here. You got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they helped me to to right. get a path mm -hmm. uh, that I may have still been wandering around trying to figure right. out. Uh, and you know, just being able to provide that opportunity for someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, being a person who has mentored. Um, and also fostered. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've learned that kids just want somebody to give them a chance. That's right. You know, so that's that's where we are, which was want somebody to come and give somebody a, a chance. Very good. Um, Very know, that's good. that's all you need sometimes is one person to give you a chance. That's right. Who listens absolutely to my voice and tries to understand me. The kids today will say yeah. they get me. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Who looks up? Uh, beyond my current circumstances mm. and sees right. a future yes. for me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that can, uh, that, can, uh, all, that can just be the spark that is yeah. needed and it really doesn't take a whole lot of time. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to thank you both for being here today and that we could share about your programs and I hope you're going to get some calls. Because <laughs> <laughs> remember, you can make a difference in a child and a youth's life it doesn't have to take a whole lot of time, whether it's in um, a program like the Distinction, the Valor and Distinction mm -hmm. program at Sudlersville Middle School, where you're asking to come in and maybe come in a couple times a year just to sit with some kids and talk to them about it, or in the Hope Academy, where you're really helping them along an academic path, but having, also helping them to see themselves outside of the high school arena in a college environment. And then, of course, just individual mentoring, which is what my program does. And we all have the same goal in mind, is to help our children and yes. youth become successful as they possibly yes, can so. be. That's very important. But it takes more than just the three of us sitting here mm -hmm. talking to you. We need more people from the community to come and help make a difference in a child's life. They're waiting for you. So I hope you answer the call. Thank you so very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.